So today we are going to start out this video by making some brisket tacos. Well, I'm going to get them going in the slow cooker. So if you have never had brisket tacos, you are missing out. And I'm going to show you how I do it and my family loves it, like is obsessed with it. We buy this um, sauce from a local Tex-Mex restaurant called Panama Sauce. And I don't know if that's what it's called everywhere, but y'all, these brisket tacos, they also sell brisket tacos there. And that's what kind of inspired me to start making it on my own because they're so expensive at the restaurant. I wanna show y'all how much brisket I have here. So can y'all see that? I pulled this brisket out of the freezer last night and I have all of these bags of brisket that have been in the vacuum seal and they've been in my freezer since i don't know probably 2022 if i can remember right um they're all sealed up good so i don't have to worry about um the blood or the juices getting on my bark because these are sealed really good well if y'all could see but look at all this brisket y'all so i bought briskets when they were on sale around the fourth of july or labor day i can't remember and um so I'm going to cook all of this to make some brisket tacos and I'll share with you how I do it. But first, <laughs> we have to come over here and pull out the big daddy today because um, I'm cooking so much brisket and so many brisket tacos that we have to have the big roaster for this. So let me get this out. I'm going to get it all set up, kind of rinsed out. Um, yeah, because this has a couple spider webs on it, so we probably need to wash that. But let me get, I keep it in the box here on my back porch. So I, when I put it up, it was clean, but because it sits out there, um, I mean, it's an enclosed back porch, kind of like a sunroom, but still, I'm gonna give it a, just a good little rinse with some soap and water. I'm gonna go get a big um, cutting board to put this on because I don't like it because I'm gonna cook this all night long and I don't like that just sitting on top of my countertops. So I have this giant cutting board here. I'm just gonna slide underneath there and that way it can sit on that and cook all night. Go ahead and get it plugged in. And then pull this out. I'm gonna go wash this real quick and then I will wash the rack and then I'm gonna show you how I prepare all of this brisket to make brisket tacos. Okay, so that's all clean. I am going to leave this rack in here, this, just because I don't want it to, I don't want that brisket to just kind of sit on the bottom and burn. I am gonna go ahead and turn it up to, oh wait, that's got something nasty on the knob. Let me wipe that. I don't know what that was. It wasn't a spider web, it wasn't really dirt. I don't, I'm not really sure. Anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this to 350 so it can be getting hot. I'll bring my trash can over here so I don't have to take a million steps. And let me see what else. I am going to put this bucket over here so that when I open these packages, I can open them one at a time in here and the juice will all go in this bucket and I'll be able to wash that a little easier. I'm also about to put this apron on because, you know, this is about to get messy. <laughs> And if I was a real, if I was a good YouTuber, I would have already had all of this stuff out and prepared where we could have just started right with, you know, what we should have started with. But, but I'm not. We're just still a work in progress here, so bear with me. All right, so, okay, I've showed you the brisket, all of the brisket. You're going to need poblano peppers. I use a bunch of poblano peppers. The first time that I did it, I only used like one or two poblano peppers for like a pound and a half of brisket. Okay, let me turn y'all up here where you can actually see me. I feel like you're talking to peppers. So I, um, what I was saying is the first time that I made this and tried it, I used like one and a half, no, I used a three pound brisket and I used, I think two big poblano peppers and that just was not enough. So the next time I made it, I like doubled up on the poblano peppers and the cilantro. So because I have so much brisket here, I probably have, I probably have six or a little more pounds of brisket. So I got two bags of the poblano peppers here. I'm gonna take those and rinse those off in a minute. I've also got two onions. I'm gonna just rough chop those. They don't have to be cut in any kind of certain way. And I have 
um, just beef broth. Now, this is not the beef broth that I ordered from Walmart. I do Walmart delivery, and I guess they must have had to substitute or something. This is not what I'm ordered. I mean, this is not what I ordered, but either or I'm going to use it. I don't care. Um, but you do cook it in beef broth of some sort. I'm out of my canned beef broth. And then I'm going to season the meat really good with salt and pepper. I need to go get my all seasoning. I'll show y'all that. And then cilantro. Let me get that out of the refrigerator as well. If y'all can hear me, I'm just over here rinsing off my cilantro. I'll be right back. Okay, so I was renting that real quick. I have, um, let me get up here where you can see. I have three, I don't know what you, ah! I, it's still dripping. It's still uh, really, really wet. Three bunches of cilantro that I'm gonna put in there. And then, what else did I need? Oh, hold on, my seasoning. Okay, so I had to go back to my little stockpile pantry. I ran out of this the other day in my mason jar, so I need to fill that back up. But I'm going to season with just with some of this all seasoning. And then I also am going to add some garlic. Well, I went ahead and turned this up a while ago. So I'm going to go ahead and add this beef broth in there so that it can be getting warm. Because I can smell it getting hot. And I don't want it to just sit here without something in it. I got four of these. I hope that's uh, enough. If not, I do have a whole gallon size baggie left of uh, some of the broth that I made from this last time so that I could add it to this if I needed to. I didn't pull it out of the freezer yet, but I could defrost it really quickly if I needed to. And I think I might need to. I also have powdered beef broth in my overstock pantry that I could just mix with water as well. So for this amount of brisket tacos, because I am pretty much doubling or a little more of the rest original recipe, because y'all I'm fixing this for um, like a family dinner. That means like with my whole family, Kara, Kelsey, their husbands, everything. And y'all, my son-in-laws can eat. And so can my husband. And we all can, I mean. We all love these brisket tacos. They are just so good. All right, so there's four beef broths in there. And then the next thing I wanna do is start putting the meat. Okay, so like I said, I have these just in this um, vacuum seal bag and I don't want juices to just go all over my cabinet. So I'm going to cut this directly over in this bucket so that those juices can just go in there I don't have a bunch of bloody juice sitting in my trash can. So I'm just gonna pull it out, put it straight over in the other pan. Now, you really should cook it with the fat side up. So I'm trying to remember, do I, I do season them like this and then I think I flip down. So I'm gonna put that one in there and then I'm gonna cut another bag before I season it, because I don't want to have to stop and um, wash my hands back and forth. So I'm gonna get this one out. I'm gonna set it in the bottom. I might have bit off more than I can chew. I may have way too much meat going in here, but it really does cook down. And, um, but I do think I'm gonna need that other bag Oh, there's my husband texting me. I, I do think I'm gonna need that other baggie full of stuff. So let me wash my hands and then we'll season this. Okay, I did forget to tell y'all that we also use cumin in this as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just season this meat really good. The broth already has a lot of salt, so I'm not worried about putting too much salt in it. Um, and all this, like I said, is gonna slow cook together overnight. So I'm not really getting it too much into the meat anyway. I'm just gonna take the lid, I mean the plastic seal thing off of this. All right, that took a hot minute. I'm liberal with my seasoning, y'all. All right, so I've got that. So what I'm gonna do is just flip this over so this is cooking with the fat side up like this.
and I don't know if I said this or not, but when I bought these brisket before I put them in the uh, vacuum seal bags, I cut a lot of the fat off just because you want some fat for flavor, but I mean, it was like that thick. We don't need that much. So I'm just going to continue here, opening up the bags, putting them in there. And I know that this is just looks like a lot of food and it is and so here's the thing since I'm already cooking it and I'm going through the trouble of cooking it why not go ahead and double it up we can eat what we want everybody can take some home I'm not real sure this this looks like a big chunk of fat right here I don't even know if I want to put that whole thing in there hmm I don't know let me just leave that in the bottom <laughs> let me think about that one I, it looks really really fatty and like it would be tough so i'm gonna have to think about that part let's see and then got this last one that looks like it might be kind of the same way it's not as fatty as that other one though so i'll go ahead and put this one in there okay y'all i just don't know maybe i'll just trim this one up a little bit i don't know it's just just don't just don't look like it's gonna be good like or tender i don't know let me see let me just cut off around that big it's almost like it feels like a big piece of gristle like that is just i don't know the other ones didn't look like that like that really tough fat gristle part i'm just gonna cut that out I know the other ones probably have a little bit of that too, but this is just excessive right here. <laughs> maybe when I was trimming it up before I put it in these bags, I didn't, maybe I got tired. Maybe this is one of the last ones I did or something. Try to get off as much of the red meat part as I can, but yeah, like, look at that. That's just, just looks so tough. I don't know. I'm almost, want to make sure that's not freezer burn. I don't think it is. It smells fine. All right, so this is looking a little bit better to me so I'll put these pieces in there I'm gonna go wash this really no need to because it's all going in the same pot but I, I don't really like looking at it and I'm sure y'all don't either okay I just rinsed it off really good I didn't see any real reason to um, wash it per se so I'm gonna do away with all of these bags and nasty bloody bags in this trash can get it out in just a minute and get this soaking okay we're back over here I think I'm not going to add any more juice because this meat will throw off. I mean, it'll it'll make its own juice too. So I don't want to overkill with too much juice. Um, I just want to make sure it has enough that it's not, you know, burning in here and that it's able to slow cook. And then I'm going to do the cumin here in just a little bit. I don't do that part right just now. All right, so let's, let's see. Y'all can't even see they get these peppers rinsed off really quickly. I wonder does this bag have a hole in it? I'm just going to use it as my strainer. If it didn't have... Yeah, it does. Okay. So, I was about to say, if it didn't have a hole, it's about to have a hole. I'm just going to rinse these off real quick. Like, put them right back in this bag. So they can drain. the other bag this is another reason i have to wear an apron i'm i'm pretty messy i clean as i go but oh these peppers smell so good and don't be scared to use these these are this gives so much flavor i mean the cumin does but it's really these poblano peppers and the cilantro cooking in there with that meat that gives it like mm, so good house and make a big old mess okay now all I do with these is and I need a little bowl or something for my chickens hold on I'll just get this little paper plate over here so what I'm gonna do with these is I literally just cut them in half and then I take out the seeds and the um, ribs and stuff inside and I give that to my chickens now don't worry chickens do not know um chickens do not know heat like we you know like like what's hot to us they don't they don't know 
I just take the majority of the seeds out. I just pretty much use my hands too. And I know it seems like a lot. Some of y'all are probably like, oh my goodness, that, that's a lot. But you're going to strain all of this too. So don't worry if you do get some seeds in there and that I'm not chopping it real fine. It's going to be, it's going to all be okay. It all kind of cooks down and cooks together and makes a yummy, yummy sauce. And it makes that brisket meat taste so good. <laughs> yeah, I, um, <laughs> I'm making the brisket tacos right now as we speak. And I think I just like got some of this poblano pepper down my throat. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not putting the seeds. I do take the seeds out. I think that's why I have to use more. Um, I literally have a little cut on my finger and some of that, I probably should have wore gloves, but some of that juice got on my cut and I'm like, I'm on fire right now. They're so funny. Let me raise y'all up a little bit. Don't y'all just love getting phone calls from your kids? I love it. Um, all right, so I got those cut up and went and ran my hand under water because FYI, those suckers are hot. Now I'm going to cut up these two onions, just rough cut. They don't have to be perfect or nothing because like I said, this is all gets strained. So let's cut up these onions right now. And then the cilantro. And I think other than the cumin, oh, and garlic. Let me set the garlic over here so we don't forget. All right, let's just get these onions cut up real quick. Put them in there. Okay, so now I'm crying because of the onions. <laughs> all my issues going on. And then all I do is take, you see how I have the peppers, and I just kind of do the same thing with the onions. I just try to kind of break these apart and make sure I spread it all over just so that onion flavor kind of gets everywhere. Like I said, there's really no rhyme or reason to how you do it, just as long as you get some in there and get it everywhere. the end we end up straining this and shredding up this brisket really small anyway to do brisket tacos so all right so there's our onions and now let me put like liberal amounts of this garlic in here everywhere so I'm gonna just eyeball it because this is a lot of meat so you're gonna need you need a lot of these ingredients. I know it seems like a lot, but it's a lot of meat we're cooking, y'all. A lot of meat, so you want it to have flavor. All right, now we are going to go get cilantro because you do put cilantro down in here as well. I might just add a little bit of water. This has so much broth in it that I might just add a little bit of water to help bring this up. Like I said, this is going to make its own juice anyway, so I don't want to add too much water all right so now i have the cumin all rinsed and ready to put in hubby just got home you said you had the cumin rinsed i did that's cumin that's parsley or whatever that's not that's cilantro let me start over i'm tired okay so got the cilantro all rinsed my husband just got here with some cumin from the grocery store because i ran out i thought i had some i think i told you all this earlier i think i i thought i had some in the other pantry but i did not I just placed another Azure order and put some more on there. But in the meantime, we're going to have to go with McCormick's cumin, which is just fine. It'll work just the same. Um, but I'm going to put two and a half of these in there. And then I'm going to save like another half of this and chop it up for us to, you know, eat fresh. And I'm making like some Mexican street corn as well. And so I want to have some of this chopped up really, really small. Um, for that as well so i'm going to set this over here for now because i'm about to chop that up but i'm going to go ahead and set this over top of everything y'all this stuff is getting in my throat over top of all of this put the lid on so i will quit breathing it in and then i'm going to turn the heat down i just i turned it on 350 to get it going really good and i might leave it on 350 for i don't know maybe like another hour or so but it does not need to stay on 350 because i will literally cook this all night long so i am about to be very liberal with this cumin try to 
get it where I can get it on the meat. I should have just waited, but I was ready to get this going. It's already late in the evening. So I'm just going to raise this up. It's okay if some of that stuff falls to the bottom because I, I kind of need it to. <clears throat> Ooh, I kind of need it to. Some of those peppers and stuff can get underneath there. That's okay. And I can always add some more cumin to it tomorrow once I give it a good taste and see where we're at. So now I am going to just place all of this cilantro here on top. And no worries, it does wilt down and cooks down in there and just gives it such a fresh, fresh, clean taste. Okay, so that's it for now. I am going to put the lid on this and I will let it go on that 350. I'm going to set my timer for like an hour or maybe an hour and a half. And then I'm going to come over and turn this heat down to about 250 or 300, uh, probably 275 maybe. And then this will cook all night long. And put my cilantro in a little bowl so it will be ready for, for tomorrow's meal. Now I am going to cut off some of these stalks here and go ahead and throw them in this roaster pan. Because they do still have flavor. We just, we don't want to eat those on our, um, you know, on our tacos. All right, so that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to chop this up really, really fine. Work in the kitchen is never done. At least bellies will be full. And my heart will be full tomorrow. I'll catch back up with y'all tomorrow show you what it looks like in the morning. Maybe I'll show you a glimpse of what it looks like right before I go to bed. It is 7.20 now, and I'll that's what I'll do. I'll come in here and show y'all what it looks like right before I go to bed, and then we'll pull the lid off, and I'll show you what I do to it next to kind of prepare it for us to eat. So, see y'all in the morning. Okay, so, sorry if it's foggy. Hold on, let me clean my lens. All right, so here is what it looks like the next morning. I have kind of stirred it a little. It's just going to keep fogging up. But yeah, that's what it looks like the next day. You can tell that it is breaking up really easy. I've kind of stirred it, like I said already. So now I'm about to take these big chunks of meat out, shred it up really good, strain this juice, put the meat back in, and let the meat finish cooking in here you know, all chopped up so that it is just ready for our tacos. So I've got all the meat in a bowl. And like I said, I'm going to take some of this, a lot of this fat off and, uh, you know, like dig out any peppers that I might have grabbed, go through that, shred that up. But first, I'm going to go ahead and strain this so that as I shred the meat, I can put it back in the strained juice in here. So there's definitely some steps to this. That's probably why it's so expensive at the, <laughs> at the restaurant. But let me get this um, rack out real quick. Take that to the sink. I don't want that dripping all over my floor, so I'm just gonna kind of do that. Yes. Okay, yeah, this is where a lot of the steps come into play, and this is, let me turn the brightness up so y'all can see. So this is why I do this like a, the day before, because like we plan on eating this this afternoon, evening, like at six. And it is 10.45 now, so by the time I get this all prepped and done, I can keep it in this um, crock pot or whatever you have on low for the rest of the day, and it'll just be ready to eat later. All right, I'm just going to start scooping this. I have my strainer over here until I can pick up this big piece here. It's kind of heavy right now. I'm try to get majority of this out. 
I'm gonna have to go empty that and strain some more. This is a lot. I don't I don't normally fix this much at one time, but I wanted to go ahead and get all those briskets out of there before they got bad. A freezer burnt or something, so and then I can just freeze some of the cooked stuff that does not get eat today. All right, let me see if I can lift this out. Actually, I probably go better go empty this strainer real quick. Okay, much easier to get that out now. Okay, so got that all strained. As good as it's gonna get. That's just a couple of pieces of meat on there. Now, the bucket's dirty, so I'm going to use that to put, you know, just pieces uh, like some of this stuff here that I find on the meat and, uh, and some fat. So now that I'm ready to cut this up and shred it up for the family to eat, sorry, you hear the lawnmower, my husband's mowing, um, I have learned that we don't like to just shred it. So I like to chop it up because it's easier to eat um, in the tortillas. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. I'm just going to go through and get some of these big fatty pieces off. It's impossible to get it all off, but as much as I can. Okay, you definitely have to try this. This is so, so good. I am telling you, we had fresh limes to squirt on there. It was wonderful. Kara brought the rice. Kelsey made the beans. Everyone was out swimming, just kind of coming in and out and eating whenever they wanted to. It was just a beautiful, beautiful evening. I hope that this encourages you to get in your kitchen and try something different. We hope y'all have a wonderful evening. We love y'all, and I'll see you really soon with a brand new video.